What is up? And welcome back to 24 Minutes of A24, the podcast that takes a look at the A24 library 24 minutes at a time. I am Ethan Simi. And I'm Ben Lawhorn. This week on the pod, we are giving our honest opinions, talking about the newest A24 film, You Hurt My Feelings, starring Julia Louis-Dreyfus and Tobias Menzies. A novelist's long-standing marriage is suddenly upended when she overhears her husband giving his honest reaction to her latest book. There are spoilers ahead for this brand new A24 movie from Nicole uh, Hall of Center. Just uh, quite frankly, a delightful movie. Just absolutely wonderful. I loved it a lot. We're going to dive into it. We'll do our true cinema like we normally do. We'll do our A1 acts um, and all of that. But yes, we we apologize for a, a late pod, but yeah. we hope that it gave you time to go check out this new movie. Ben, you mentioned when you went to go see it this afternoon, you had a pretty full theater. Yeah, I was excited, um, especially after, you know, seeing your tweet that you mentioned. But like I got there <laughs> and like over half the theater was full, which I thought was great. It was like three o'clock on a Saturday. Um, Hell yeah. I do think my partner and I were the youngest people by at least 20 years. Okay, um, yeah. Just judging by that, but <laughs> I was still happy to see people getting out and going to see this movie in theaters. Cause it does feel like something that will be even more popular once it gets to streaming. I think it'll yeah. catch on for a lot of people, but you know, always encouraging people to go see stuff while you can in the theaters. A hundred percent. I had a very, uh, different yet interesting theatrical <laughs> experience um so so i went on thursday night when this movie came out right it came out on a friday i went the thursday night to like the 645 show showing in in basically one theater in portland in one regal theater um and that's that's the downtown so i made the commitment i went downtown on a on like a weekday night and had to find street parking and i was there Dang. and i did it all i was the only person in the theater all the way up until like the trailers and then I got two other couples that came in and, and sat one seat, uh, you know, like me and then one seat and then they sat to my right. And then same thing on my left. Um, same thing. Couples at least 40 years older than I was like, they were definitely on the older side. Um, so, you know, you can get a, a little taste of like the demographic that is finding this movie interesting, which is wonderful. Like, that's great. I'm so happy they're making it out to the theater. The people on my right, um, two very inter interesting occurrences that I just wanted to mention that have never quite happened to me before. And I know you've talked on this pod, Ben, about like not the greatest theatrical experiences. And yeah. you've kind of you've kind of scared me a little bit because every time <laughs> every time I go to the theater, I'm like, is this the time? Is this the time? Someone's just gonna be on their phone the whole time. Is this the time I'm gonna have to tell somebody? please be quiet or like, Hey, I'm trying to watch a movie here. Yeah. Like, when's it going to happen? This was as close as I've gotten the, the, the partner, the woman in this relationship, um, took off her, her shoes, had her bare feet on the bars, <laughs> you know, like it, there's the row of seats and then you got the bars like right in front of you, you can mm -hmm. rest your feet on sometimes. Um, and that was, uh, a, a fascinating choice. I, I don't think I've ever, seen that before have you ever seen anybody go barefoot in the theater no thankfully like <laughs> i think it's you know whatever strange enough even people just bring like like they'll wear like slippers and bring a blanket and stuff like you're not at yeah. home you know but like <laughs> to go barefoot is a real commitment like that's that's Hard something else yeah it was hardcore so so that that transpired and then this movie just downright hilarious. It's, it's absolutely a hysterical movie. Very, very funny. Mm -hmm. But the guy in that relationship had a particular laugh. And, it, and if you are, <laughs> if you, if you watch Seinfeld to the level that I do, you'll understand the reference. Very coarse haws, very, very ha ha. And when he would laugh, um, he would literally do that. Like so, so loud to the point where <laughs> his partner had to say, you cannot yell anymore. You have to stop. You have to stop yelling. And I overheard that. And it was like almost to the point where it's like, this is a funny movie, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little turned off because you're laughing so loudly. Yeah. Luckily he tuned it down, but I just very fascinating theatrical experience. And I was just by myself, you know, shedding some tears, enjoying every second of this film. And 
It was it was something else, dude. It was something else. Um, <laughs> let real 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 quick before we dive into your hurt my feelings. A twenty four dropped a new trailer for a brand new movie that did premiere South by Southwest in March. Um, it is called Problemista. It is starring Tilda Swinton and Isabel Rossellini, I believe. Yeah. Um, and Greta Lee, who's going to be in Past Lives next week that we're talking about. Um, I wonder your thoughts on the trailer, just quickly. What did you think of it? I'm excited about it. I think uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, the main actor, Julio Torres, uh, wrote and directed. I believe this is like his uh, feature debut. So mm-hmm. I just was somewhat familiar with him from Los Spookies. Um, okay. But I guess he's also a writer on SNL right now or, you know, was oh, wow. up through 2021. So kind of cool to see this. Um, I think one thing A24 is pretty good at is giving people their first chance to make a movie. So I think this has a, a great chance of being just a wonderful debut to see like a little weird. That's like little Bo is afraid ish a little bit. Thank like, you. I was going to say that, right? It's got, yeah. yeah, it's got those vibes to it. Yeah. Without a doubt. So, um, I'm, I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be cool. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the director, uh, Michelle Gondry, but it kind of reminds mm-hmm. me of that too, where it's just like a little, over the top and just like otherworldly, but in a really good way. So I'm, I'm stoked. I can't wait to see it. It looks really whimsical, really funny, yep. really, yeah. really wry. And Tilda Swinton looks really unhinged in like the funniest possible way. Mm-hmm. I mean, her hair is like dyed red and she, her makeup is so over the top. Uh, yeah. I, I like the trailer. I definitely got Bo's afraid vibes. You know, I think the whole thing is like, kind of this um, fantastical take on the American dream, which I think is going to be very um, interesting. It is scheduled to be released on August 4th. So keep your eyes on Problemista, uh, another directorial debut in the A24 catalog, uh, which is super exciting. Uh, I think we're both both pretty excited for it. Uh, Okay, let's talk about You Hurt My Feelings, the newest A24 movie that, like I mentioned, I just had a downright delightful time with this film. I saw it a few days ago, so I'm a little less fresh than you. Uh, ben, what what did you think of You Hurt My Feelings? You, I mean, yeah, it's delightful. It was <laughs> so good. I loved it. I love seeing um, yeah, just like a, a story that didn't have like world ending conflict, you know? Yeah, it low was just stakes like, in the best way. Exactly. And it's just so much of it is like real life and just the things they talked about where it's just... I mean, it's no coincidence that I think she was also in Seinfeld, but it was kind of like the movie about nothing, you know, or it's just like, oh, these are just like everyday trivial kind of things. And like the, the white lies you tell your partner, um, not a hurtful way, but because you actually like want to support them kind of thing, you know? Um, I, yeah, I thought like all the performances for the most part, the performances were pretty good. Um, the, the sun was a little rough for me oh fascinating i loved the sun i thought it was hilarious oh nice i was just gonna i was just gonna mention one really funny part i'm sure we'll get to it but you know the 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 son and the mother uh, julia louis dreyfus and um so her name is beth and the son's name is Mm -hmm. elliot um they kind of have a a little spat a little thing and you know he he goes to his room mad and is like, look, I just, I just, you're just making me feel worse. I want to go to bed. Um, and she's like, okay, fine. And, and starts to walk out and he goes, wait, mom, do we have any bagels? And <laughs> she goes, I'll check. And then that's the end of the scene. And like, I think that is a perfect, perfect encapsulation of Nicole Hollis Center and the script and the dynamic between the characters and those trivialities and relationships. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I really, really liked that. Not to derail you, but I, no. I liked, I liked the son. I thought he was fun. That's I'm, I'm super happy for you. I think that's fantastic. Um, I think maybe it's just like being up against, you know, Michaela Watkins and just like all these other mm-hmm. very experienced actors um, who I enjoy just like, I don't know. It just like, it wasn't awesome. He wasn't bad, but I just like, I don't know. It was, it was fine. Um, I did like that storyline though. And like the scene that he gets at the end, I think is really good and very powerful, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's so much like small stuff, but it was just very, very enjoyable. Like I I loved, I need them to play sisters like in every movie, like they were perfect together. You know, I thought they were wonderful. Um, And then like the therapist and our dude from succession was in there as well. Dude, Ariane Moriad. What a guy. Incredible in this movie. I thought, I thought he was so funny. 
he was great. And then we get Amber Tamlin and David Cross, like playing a married couple. <laughs> um, their scenes were great. Zach Cherry, who we know from like, you know, MCU hey, cameos. Do the flip. <laughs> do a flip. Yeah. <laughs> so he's awesome. So great cast. Um, just overall really good performances. And I liked the story quite a bit. Um, I was surprised in a happy way that it was only 93 minutes. Like it wasn't super long and it didn't need to be like, I think it was just the perfect length. They told the story they needed to tell. And it's just like, it's a great closed, just one and a half hour. And mm-hmm. I'm happy. You know what I mean? Like, that's great. I don't have to worry about anything else that's coming. Like nothing got left unsolved or anything. It's like, this is just so wonderful. Everything is right here. So I, I loved it. I had a really good time with it. It's so palatable because 93 minutes, it's easy to watch. It's easy to get invested. And what I think is so unique about it is that main tension between Julia Louis-Dreyfus's character, Beth, and her husband, Don, and the white lie of him not actually liking her book and then just never saying it. And she hears, and then they have the, the you know, kind of this um, tension between them. That main tension kind of gets resolved like two thirds or like three quarters of the way through the movie, but there's other things that are happening. Right. And I think that really speaks to, um, that really purposeful identification and look at the, those, those trivialities in life, because every single character of this movie is kind of coping with their, with their life in different ways. Like you mentioned, um, you know, Beth's sister, she's an interior designer and, she basically like hates her job and she like doesn't like it and never gets it right. And it's just like not interested anymore. And, and uh, Elliot, the son is kind of at a dead end job and his girlfriend ends up breaking up with him. And, you know, I, I think there's a, a lot of ordinary everyday things mm-hmm. that work really well together. And it does feel like the perfect low stakes movie. Like it's not trying to save the world and it's not trying to teach yeah. us something we don't know. It is literally, you know, asking questions, where, where is that line between compassion and support and, and gaslighting somebody and, and setting them up, them up for failure in the future? And um, how do we do that with our, with our partners and our spouses and our children and all of the relationships that we have? Um, you know, how do we cope with this idea of success that we had for ourselves that we might not ever achieve, right? Um, yeah. I think... Um, Succession guy, Arian uh, Moyad, I believe his name is, plays Mark. He's like a failed actor. And and how is he coping with that? And we kind of get this taste from all of them, which I think is really um, just a fun way to do the movie, really. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it really kind of like lets the movie breathe. It's a little bit um, kind of pretty honed in on, on these people's relationships. The last time that Julia Louis-Dreyfus and Nicole Hollis Center worked together was 10 years ago for Enough Said... And I believe that was James Gandolfini's last movie that he yeah. did. Um, I've heard nothing but great things about that movie. I, I couldn't get to it before this pod, but you you rest assured that I plan to get to it very soon. Um, I loved the script, thought it was just hilarious. You mentioned we open with the scene of a bickering uh, real life couple and their bit throughout the entire movie is hilarious. The sock bit, through the whole movie oh, of, of, of Mark and his socks and, and um, everything that, you know, that has. And I think what's really, really special, Julia Louis-Dreyfus doesn't do like a ton of movies, but she is so locked in to like mm-hmm. this style of movie. She is so perfect. And I've read reviews that have kind of mentioned how like in the early days, in the 90s of Nicole Hall of Center's career, she kind of chose... Um, uh, one one person to kind of like be her muse. Um, and I'm I'm blanking on the name. You would totally know. Uh, anyway, I'll try to figure it out. She was one person. Kind of moved on to Julia Louis Dreyfus, and is now like using her as as this kind of muse. Um, and they work so well together. And the mastery that Julia has over the balance between like sincerity and hilarity is so perfect. She has that nailed down so, so, so good and can make you, you know, tear up from laughter or absolute obliterating sadness, which, you know, not a lot of people can do. Um, I love the score. 
I noticed yeah. the score as well. I thought it was really sensational. Yeah, I thought that was really good. Um, another thing that I liked, sorry, just kind of looking up some of her early movies. I think maybe it was Catherine Keener that she yeah, worked with. Yeah, thank you. It was Catherine Keener. Yeah, um, who, I mean, she's been in a lot of stuff, but people might recognize her from like 40-Year-Old Virgin. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> I mean, she, yeah, I don't know. Where else, she's like, been in like so many other. She's been in so much stuff. That's like the first thing I think of because, like, I <laughs> I love her in that movie. Um, but what was I gonna say? Oh, yes, the sincerity and the hilarity. Like it, that makes me think of Julia Louis Dreyfus's like class that she's teaching, um, yep. and just some of those like funny moments between all the students. Like I love the dude who's like, I want to write a story. Like I'm really like, I'm really motivated or really like entranced with prisons. She's like, Oh cool. Like what is it about prisons that makes you want to write? Like, what is it about it that you like? It's like jail. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> all right, dude. Cool. Sick, like bro. <laughs> dialed in, I guess, you know, like that's what we're doing. Yeah. So, um, so I liked how funny that was. I also enjoyed, and I could be misremembering this, but, it is very clearly a New York movie, like without a doubt. Absolutely. Very clearly. But we don't do any like aerial landscape shots from what I remember. Like there's mm. no like we're in New York, you know, like no, it's all in the depths. Right. But yeah, it's all just like everything. Like we're on the ground, like the kind of apartments and stuff that they live in. It's like, oh, there's no question that this is a New York movie. And it just feels so like real and just like. Like they were just, I mean, literally just shooting on the street and doing all that stuff. So I like that about that. I like that about the movie as well. It's just like kind of give us a sense of place um, mm-hmm. uh, of, of where we are and just kind of these people's, I think that leads to the kind of person they are, you know, it's like the hustle and bustle kind of thing. And I don't know. I, I really enjoyed it. I like the relationships between the two main couples and then even individually, obviously like, you know, one of them is sisters, but like the two husbands, you know, like their little mm-hmm. relationship to their little friendship. Cool. Yeah. And just like that, you know, like, Aaron, yeah. like he can't actually say like, he knows what happened, but he can't say anything. Cause he's like, mm-hmm. you know, like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to listen to my wife. I got to do what she <laughs> says, but like that dude. Yeah. We'll get into it, but that yeah, was, yeah, yeah. it was good. Yeah. I thought it was great too. And, and you know, something the movie does re- I, I think it's edited very, very well. And it's, yeah. and it's, it's pretty flawless. It's pretty, um, kind of just like whirlwinds you right through like what is going on. Um, there's never any question of like where where we are with certain relationships or like who's talking about what or like there's no um kind of murkiness in anything. I think it's exceptionally clear. Uh, and I mean Nicole Hall Center does have a history of of using therapists in her movie. I think uh, Tobias Menzies incredible like fizzling therapist in this movie just like cannot give a shit really about his job and is finding out like he's not good maybe he's not good at his job another aspect of his character like like, just kind of the cherry on top of all this is this um kind of like masculine vanity of older age right Mm -hmm. of like you know uh, do do i i used to be hot do i look old you do botox and this really delicately touched on but pertinent conversation of societal standards when it does come to gender and beauty um which like you don't see that in movies like i don't think like i just don't think that's like something that is like regularly talked about um and so like i respect this movie a lot for that and the to me, the more that you think about it, the more that you can kind of unravel and just just kind of break it down and be like, you know, oh, I loved that moment or I loved being in this moment or seeing this conversation. Um, let's do let's do true cinema since we're we're jumping around the movie. Yeah. I think we should go through. Uh, let's do the opening scene. This was hilarious. It, it, really great way to start the movie. Real life couple, David Cross and Amber Tamlin, at, bickering at each other. They've been uh, married for like 10 years. They've been going to see Dawn for two years. And um, this is when you realize Dawn is just like really checked out. And it's yeah. hilarious that he just like lets them lets them go. I thought it was a great introduction. It was really good. And then even the way it all wraps up when Amber's like, 
don't don't pick on him. He looks tired. Like he does look tired, doesn't he? You know, it's just like they have this like empathy for him. Like, oh poor guy. Like they finally work together as a team to attack him, and yeah. it's like, oh man, my guy. No, I thought that was great, and even just like David Cross, like why do I need to look at you when you're talking to me? Like this is how I focus. Is just like looking somewhere else, and <laughs> just yeah, that you could. It's that kind of stuff. Like, oh, this yeah. seems so sincere. Like, is this actually taken out of their life, or is this just so sincere and accurate that it could be? You know. Yeah. And it's moments like that too, where I I just, I can identify with that because it's like, we all have our quirks and like how we listen or how we respond or how we communicate with somebody, especially in a, in a marriage or a relationship or a long-term relationship. Um, and like that person is supposed to know you the best and they should know that about you, but they, they, in this situation, they do not. And it's really played upon and it's really, really funny. Um, then the next one we have on the list here is, uh, kind of working, for the church and doing the homeless like clothes giveaway uh we get beth and her sister uh talking just gen- really just about life and yeah. and just being in that moment and then her sister gets called uh, a dumb shit by one of the homeless people <laughs> yeah and it's just like it just is kind of a scene that doesn't mean a lot but it also is like Oh man, like that, that's just life. Like that shit happens to you and, and you just, life goes on, I guess, you know? Yeah. And I think it's, it's tied to the overall theme about like lying with good intentions because they are there and they're talking shit about what they're doing. Like, Oh my God, like this is exhausting. Like whatever. Like they don't, yeah. they don't love being there, but they do love helping, you know? And so like someone comes up and it's like, Hey, how's it going? You know, but then they leave. It's like, Oh shit. Okay. God, like, whatever you know so Mm -hmm. and i think we've all done that where you sign up to volunteer and help someone it's like i don't want to be here at all like i will i'm gonna help you know i'm glad but like i would much rather be asleep or something like that you know (laughs) and so i think it's just a great introduction to this theme of like not every lie is necessarily bad you know and this is like a very white lie that they probably don't even realize they're doing but i thought it was a wonderful introduction yeah it it really does open up the conversation to like how do you delineate like between what is okay to say and maybe what's, what's not okay to say? Mm-hmm. Um, hearing her husband, hearing Don uh, say he doesn't like the book. This scene was really funny to me on multiple levels. I think initially like Beth and Sarah, her sister going in to <laughs> going into the store to like sneak up on, uh, on Mark and Don and basically saying like, um, you know, we're going to go sneak up on them because I, I want to be playful with them. They can't get in until they finish their ice cream cone. They da- they down their ice cream cone. So and she's good. like, she's like, oh, it wasn't, it wasn't worth it. And it's just like, Julia Lou Drive is so good at those little one-offs that she, you know, it's very Seinfeld-esque of, you know, or very like VP where it's like, she just kind of does these one-off kind of offhanded lines that are really, really funny. She overhears Don say he doesn't like the book. He's read like 20 drafts of it and is just not a fan of it. Doesn't know how to tell her or like, or how to let her down. Beth then goes outside and this was hilarious to me. She tries to vomit, but she can't <laughs> vomit. She's like, Oh, and, and her sister's like, there's a trash can right behind you. Oh no, we're going to do it right here. And then she's like, Nope, Nope, I can't do it. And then, like, and then they walk back in. And like I said, that's that really fine line of like, Oh my God, that's incredibly heartbreaking. But now I'm busting with laughter because you're doing this, this just sublime acting job. Yeah. It, it was wonderful. Uh, when they do go in and see their hus- husbands just like standing there, like, are they frozen? Like, are they, yeah. what are they doing? You know, <laughs> it's just like, yeah. yeah. And it's just these two guys staring at socks. It's like, yeah, I guess that's what you do. Like, you're not going to be super animated looking at socks, but there's like kind of talking shit. It's like, are they, oh no, one of them moved. Okay. All right. They're not frozen. So, the socks um, bit was great too, because we called it back later and I, I thought it was lovely. Yeah, I loved it. Um, yeah, the ice cream bit, like you said at the beginning, was just like one of the funniest. Like we see them go in and then suddenly just like come back out. You know, it's like, well, I'm not going to rush this, you know, like I'm going <laughs> to take my time. So, uh, yeah, it was a great scene. And obviously just the turning point of the movie yeah. right there. You know, you're we're witnessing her hear this. And even just like my heart was like, oh, this is so awkward to be watching this. So uh, super well done. You know it in the trailer, too. It's not a surprise. Yeah. It's like we know where the movie is going and we know that it is going this route eventually. It's still hard to listen to and see that. 
next on the list, um, Beth and Sarah visiting their mom, potato salad in the tinfoil, trying to get their mom to donate some clothes to the church, even though she just donated last week. Uh, really, really funny stuff. And, you know, a deep dive into relationships between parents and, and, and children and what that means. And um, just incredible physical comedy with the uh with the tupperwares and yeah. she has like three thousand and she wants to put potato salad in tinfoil <laughs> yeah. um i thought it, i thought it was great really really fun just like easy scene yeah yeah and uh, again like shows the dynamic between the sisters and mom um how they can kind of like bullshit with each other you know like talk kind of talk shit about her to her face and just like oh it was a great lunch you know like whatever like they can do all that kind of stuff um but yeah the tupperware scene like j- just the just being able to see all of the Tupperware. She's like, no, put it in tinfoil. She's like, I'm not going to put potato <laughs> like, salad in gross, tinfoil. <laughs> like, um, it's just so good. And I mean, the mom did a wonderful performance as well. So I, yeah. I just, I'm an only child, but like I could see in there, like the dynamic a sibling would have with the relationship to the parent as well. And it was really cool to, to see that. We got to give out, give a shout out to the mom. Jeannie Berlin plays, uh, plays the mom. Listen to this. This is really quick of like the last few things on her CV here. The Fablemans. She was in the Oscar nominated The Fablemans. She plays Sid Peach on Succession. Yeah. And now she's in You Hurt My Feelings. Um, Incredible career. I I can't assume that she's that young. I mean, she she's definitely on the older side, but she's she's kicking out projects left and right. You love to see love to see it. Uh, I'm happy for her. She was funny. She had a good doctor's office scene as well. Um, and, you know, that doctor's office scene, again, very telling of like the main theory of the movie, the main theme, the main thing we're talking about is like, you just lie, you just lie to someone to get them off your back and then you never come clean. Like, is that okay? Can you live with that? Like, what's the cutoff and like not doing that? Uh, I, I, I love that. Next one on the list, uh, the dinner where Beth says she she knows Don doesn't like the book, um, and then Sarah offers um, Tums and Xanax, and mm-hmm. she's like, well, "Should we all take a Xanax?" <laughs> and yeah. and um, really good stuff from Moyad as well in this scene. Um, just just being like, "So the Greek dip we have here is in <laughs> olive oil," <Yeah. laughs> and trying to break up the tension. Uh, it was tough to watch, but it was really well executed and. You know, it, truthfully, like Don in that situation, 100% accurate because he knows he's been caught in the lie. He's trying to deflect. He's trying to figure it out on the fly. How deep does she know? How deep do we need to go right now? When can we talk in private about this? And he's really just trying to navigate like on the fly in front of, you know, his sister, sister-in-law and, and, and brother-in-law. So uh, tough situation for that guy. Yeah. And honestly, like leading up to it, once she finds out she's obviously very cold to him, like at home and yeah. stuff. And he's kind of racking his brain. Like what happened? You know, cause obviously he has no idea that she heard that. And so suddenly like in, in an instant, his wife's like, I'm sleeping on the couch. I'm ignoring you. And you talk to me, like all that kind of stuff. So it's just like, what is going on? And then he finds out, he's like, that's what this is about, you know? And again, like probably to kind of deflect and like play it down. But um, yeah, very well done scene, like a lot of tension, between all four of them um but yeah i really liked like oh yeah i've got tums here i've got gas x you know and <laughs> julia she's just like we're not dead like why are we do you dead have this yeah, stuff with it? yeah it's like <laughs> it was so good so um yeah wonderful scene yeah really really good calling out the patient for saying stuff uh under his breath and then the patient denies it this pa- patient is zach cherry uh don has done a couple zoom sessions that we see with him the first time we see the zoom before the zoom like ends he kind of says like you know what guys what an idiot or whatever and yeah. you're like ah damn like that that's pretty cold okay and then we see it a second time when he comes in person to the office and then leaves down down you know kind of outside of the office and same same situation mumbles under his breath don yeah. brings it up next time and the guy's like nope i didn't say that <laughs> and so like again different dynamic same situation puts you in their shoes what do you do right like you're caught do you do you fess up to do you own up to it what benefit would that be for anybody that's involved john in that situation class act he's like okay let's move on and like maybe that's your best route i I think it does unearth a lot of really 
fascinating, difficult questions in a situation like that. And Zach Cherry, perfect person for that role. Yeah. Uh, he he was hilarious. Yeah. No, he's he's wonderful. I'm always excited to see Zach Cherry. Um yeah, it's like they do the in person one and I think you kind of give him like the benefit of the doubt on the zoom. Like, uh, he didn't mean for me to hear that. Obviously you like <laughs> yeah. just didn't close. And then the first time in person he leaves. And I think he says, I'm like, Oh, that was pointless. You know? And it's just like, Oh shit. <laughs> like he just says that every time, you know? Um, but I like that on the last one after he kind of doesn't necessarily call yeah. him out, but you know, like addresses it. And then like, he doesn't say anything when he leaves like, Oh, well he either mm-hmm. like, isn't going to say anything or he's going to wait till he knows he's far enough away. But, um, that was kind of a nice thing to see, but I, I really enjoyed their dynamic. And it does make their next meeting so much sweeter because this is when Don start. And I know I'm jumping ahead slightly, but like we kind of have this breakthrough with Don and Beth where they realize like, Hey, we, we might have to be honest uh, with, mm. with each other, with ourselves, with our self-preservation about our levels of success and happiness and love and care for each other and whatever. And so Don really does pour in to Zach Cherry's character, Jim and you know offers him a real solution of like here's how you can kind of make it make up with your brother and sister like you should try this go watch their kids go help them out and jim is like yeah i might try that and you're like fuck yes my guy did it like it just feels really good in that moment and um but it's like it's a triviality it's one patient this is your practice dude you should be doing this all day long but it's like it's a breakthrough and it just feels really authentic and it feels really good. Um, and, and it was, it was fun to see. Um, next one here on the list, the weed store robbery. I'm really curious about this because I want to know, I want to know if this scene worked for you overall. I think you mentioned at the top that this, this was something that you did enjoy. Yeah. I thought it it was a good scene. I mean, we get her coming in again and I believe this is also after the breakthrough. So, the first time she comes with donuts and she just like lets people take them, you know, this time it's like, don't touch my donuts. You know, yeah, she's very like, up front, like <laughs> don't do that. Um, you know, she felt weird buying from her son and comes in to do that. But I think it's that was, this was maybe the most physical humor of her, like, <clears throat> sorry, of her literally protecting him, like laying on top of mm-hmm, him and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So I really, I don't know. I had a good time with this scene. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I just thought it was really good. And, it was cool to get some physical comedy in there. Yeah. And shout out the uh, executive producer joke. We went back to the well on that one as well, which was really well done. Really just a low key like, hey, if you ever write a script, let me know. I'm an executive producer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was really, really well done. Um, Elliot, the son, tells, uh, tells his mom that she basically sent him up for failure. She lied to him. Um, and really pivotal emotional scene that makes you think um at least in my situation as a parent of like what what are the things that i say that could uh really impact my child down the road of like Mm -hmm. not believing in themselves even though i tell them to situation where it's like this kid's 23 and he remembers back in seventh grade when his mom was like you're a good swimmer and then his swim teacher was like you're just average and it's like what what do I do? Like, who do I believe? Do I do like, you know, like how does my life shake out from that? Um, and then similar to that, Beth and Dawn come clean about the white lies to each other on the couch. Um, and they just kind of really get honest and authentic. And, and, um, I'll just be honest with you right now. This is my true cinema moment. This is hundred percent the, the best part of the movie, the most true real part of the movie. And the part that I, I teared up the most. Yeah, this was a great scene. I mean, to go back to the first stuff with the son um, and her just kind of gassing him up, you know, and it's like, well, no, I just wanted to, like, encourage you and I wanted you to know you could do anything. It's like, but at some point, you know, you just need to be honest. And, like, I felt somewhat similar to that having, like, I used to draw a lot as a kid. My dream job was Mm. to be an animator for Disney. Like, that's what I wanted to do. You so can do draw it ben. all the time. I guess never too late. It. Never too late. Um, <laughs> computers scared me off. I'm like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Not for me. Yeah. Um, but there was a time when like I had to like call my mom kind of on her shit where it's just like, no, stop telling me everything's great. Like I need yeah. actual feedback now. Like I need to know, like if, if I want to get better, I need actual like mm-hmm. objective advice mm-hmm. here. Not just like, you're my son. This is great. It's like, no, I, I want to get better. Mm-hmm. So it was it, that's what like I kind of related to throughout this scene. It's like, yeah, your parents want the best for you. But at some point it's just like, no, like I, I need to actually just know. Um, 
the truth, you know, like just how this actually is going. Uh, and then, yeah, the scene with them kind of coming clean with each other. It was a wonderful scene. Uh, there was, like I said, we were part of the youngest, probably the youngest people in this theater. And a lot of these people felt like they were at home as well. Cause like they would just react to stuff, you know, that was <laughs> yeah. happening on screen. And one of them is from this scene where, you know, she's like, he's like, I don't know some of the, she says like, Oh, I don't know some of the gifts you give me. He's like, what gifts? <laughs> and she leaves and comes back with like all these sets of Incredible earrings. Incredible right? moment. Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great scene. And then he asks her which ones. And like, we all know <laughs> what he's going to, right. Like, and we all know what's going to happen, but someone in the crowd is like all of them. It's like, don't, <laughs> why are you stepping on the line? Like he's going to say it in four <laughs> seconds. Like, just give it some time. You know, it's like, wow. we know, we know it's all of them. Everyone here mm. is watching the movie with you. Like, it's just so annoying. Like, some what are you people, doing? Man, you know, you can't escape. You are followed you by bad theatrical is. experiences. It's just the worst. So yeah, I don't know. That That is like the best scene of the movie though. Like it's a really good, like, okay, I can, we can let our guard down. Let's just get everything yeah. out there right now. So uh, yeah, it's a wonderful scene. And my guy, Don, coming, coming with the fire, with the V-necks, three years oh. in a row, he's like, listen, I got nothing to show off. I, yeah. Guys don't need cleavage. We got nothing going on. And, got nothing happening. and she rebuttals, right? And she's like, well, cleavage is down here. And he's like, doesn't matter. It's a guy. It's, I got nothing <laughs> yeah. going on. Like, um, which I thought was hilarious. And then that kind of, you know, segues us into one year later, she has her book uh, published. She's got a nice pull quote on it. They go to have another anniversary dinner and they re-gift each other the same gifts they know that they don't like, which was so fulfilling to me. I felt yeah. so, I just felt so proud of them and like so happy to see them happy with each other and honest with each other. Like, we don't like these and we know that. And that is so cool that we can be truthful about that. And it's like, that's part of the joke. Um, in this case, I do think Elliot as as the son was really instrumental to this because he kind of brings us out of that very inside joke um, to maybe a younger audience or someone that is like, Oh, okay. Wow. Inside joke. Like, yeah, real cute, real funny, whatever. Um, and you know, I, 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 I liked it. I, I thought it was really funny. Yeah, it was wonderful. Um, it was super funny. It's like, of course, that's what they're going to get for each other, you know? And that is, again, it's another moment of that happening in the theater where like after she opened the earrings, like you, we heard someone in the theater say like, Oh, I bet she got him the sweater. It's like, yeah, oh, yes, God, people, obviously. Please like, stop. Like, what is happening? You guys like, you're not <laughs> movie detectives. Like, Oh, I bet I can <laughs> like figure out what this is 20 seconds before it happens. Like, Jesus. I don't know. Um, <sighs> but it's a, it's a great scene. It's like, yeah, you can never get each other anything else. Like you have to keep doing this. Uh, kind of reminded me of like from the office when Jim and Karen give each other, I think it's like 27 dresses or something like the same yeah. gift, you know, it's just like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's kind of the same brain and just like, Oh yeah, this is a joke. This is the best thing you guys could have done. Yeah. Um, I will say my, my runner up for true cinema is the, is the bit or the moment or the scene when David Cross and Amber Tamlin um, basically go into their last session with Don or like, listen, we've agreed um, we want a refund and we're not going to see you anymore. You owe us $33,000. We've been coming to you for two years. And, um, this is the one thing we do agree upon and you need to refund us. And, you know, I think in some sense that does snap Don out a little bit. Cause he's like, listen, you want to hear the truth? Like, I think you guys should get divorced. I think, I think that you need to cut it off and end it and whatever. Um, and then later on he does get a, a piece of mail that says, <laughs> yeah. you know, you owe us $33,000 due upon receipt. And he just throws it in his trash can, which I thought was definitely one of the funnier moments. Yeah. And his delivery, like, you know, if you need to do installments, like that's fine. You can work something out. <laughs> Peak you know? David Cross material. <laughs> yeah. It was so good. Um, but yeah, it sounds like we both had the same true cinema moment here, which is just, it was wonderful. hundred percent delightful in every way, really heart wrenching, but really, really, uh, really fun. Um, okay. Nicole Hall Center. Let's do her A1 act. We've got You Hurt My Feelings, new A24 movie we just talked about. Lucky Hank, the new Bob Odenkirk mm -hmm. show, which I've, actually, I've heard is pretty good. Um, Mrs. Fletcher, she did one episode of The Land of Steady Habits. Orange is the New Black, she did one episode. 
Parks and Rec, she did four episodes for. Uh, enough said, like we mentioned earlier. Please give Friends with Money, uh, one episode of Gilmore Girls, four episodes of Sex and the City, and then she did write the screenplay for The Last Duel. I wanted to throw that in there. Yeah. Very different from this. Where are you at on The Last Duel, Ben? Pro. I love The Last Duel. That's my guy. Me? Yeah. The Last Duel fucking rocks, and I can't believe nobody went to go see it. It just made zero dollars at the box office. We all went and sat together and watched that, <laughs> uh, all the three films. Like it's, Dude. it's great. It's a wonderful movie. If you don't like The Last Duel, get out of here but it's it such is, a good movie it's so hard to hear people like go like watch air this year and air is a great movie i love it i'm pro but people are like man it's the first time matt damon and ben affleck are back together and it's like the last duel was fucking three years ago they were back it's what true. were you doing that's where i think they fucked up on marketing They're like hey you guys remember goodwill hunting go see this it's like no no nope. air, air is the movie to tell people that air is the one it's like yeah, hey goodwill fair. hunting that like but you don't need like you know bleach on like you know <laughs> matt damon and like super weird haircut ben affleck like that's not this is not the movie to make that comparison to but it's a wonderful <laughs> movie um jody comer is fantastic and obviously oh, pro adam so driver and anything pro. so yeah. yeah i like it um but for me on this one uh i mean this movie probably is like the best thing i've seen that she's done mm -hmm. but i am gonna go with parks and rec she did, mm. she uh directed four episodes and one of those the first one she did is the eagleton episode which stars <laughs> nice. my lady parker posey so hey let's go i gotta i gotta you tie it all back, back together <laughs> gotta do it so um that's what i'm gonna go with she did like some she did a lot of the eagleson episodes it sound like from looking at um the list oh, of what she did so yeah but i'm gonna go with uh her run on parks and rec that's a good, that's a good pick. Yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to throw everything in there just so we could get an idea of like, you know, yeah. what, what she's been doing, what she's been, been bouncing around. Um, I would say the last duel, but like, I, I know that we just talked about this movie and I know there's some like recency bias, but if, if generally, like if you put both of the last duel and you hurt my feelings in front of me and you were like, you have a free night, you have all the time in the world. Um, what would you like to watch? I'd probably go with you hurt my feelings like four out of five times because mm -hmm. the last duel, it is about some heavy subject material that not necessarily the, the most enjoyable thing to, to watch. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I will go with you hurt my feelings. Um, I'm really excited. And, I, and obviously really hope that her and Julia Louis Dreyfus continue to make more movies together. For I sure. think they're, they're a special package. You got to put Julia Louis Dreyfus on here for a one X. You hurt my feelings. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Hey Arnold, she did one episode, which I'm going to run through some of her voice work, which I just think is worth pointing out. I had no clue she did some of some of these voices here. Obviously Seinfeld, which she's most well known for. A Bug's Life, uh, Blue's Clues, Arrested Development, obviously SNL. Uh, she was on The Simpsons, Curb Your Enthusiasm, The New Adventures of Old Christine, Planes, uh, Enough Said, Veep, another TV show of hers, uh, Downhill, Onward, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Black Widow, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever in the MCU as, as Valentina Del uh, something. I can't remember. That's a, yeah, it's a super long <laughs> She game. goes by Val, know. so I'm in the clear. Yeah. Um, you People, which is new to Netflix uh, this year. And uh, like I said, you hurt my feelings. So she's in a lot of TV primarily, but she has also been in some big movies um, that, you know, I think I think are definitely worth calling out. I, I don't know, dude. It's tough. It's yeah, it, it's a tough call. I think for performance alone, like Veep is probably what I would pick, okay. but I, I am going to go with Christmas vacation for my pick just because there's a line that she says in there that like I quote, like every Christmas it comes up and you know, if you've seen the movie, you realize like all what's happened. Um, but her and her husband just, they have this exchange of like, why is the carpet all wet? Todd? Like, I don't know, Margo. Like, I don't know why, but that like I that's one of my favorite lines um from Christmas Vacation. And I mean it's all Julia in there. So yeah. that's why I, I'm gonna shout out that scene specifically. But if you haven't watched Veep, check it out. She's okay. so good in that. She's wonderful. Okay, nice. Um look, I'm going I'm going with Seinfeld. I fall asleep watching Seinfeld every single night of my life. I nice. I'm 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 not even joking. You put me on a lie detector. Um I can't 
I can't not. It's just like a, a really bad habit. And I'm, I'm really excited for people to tweet at us and me and say like, I'm, I'm ruined forever. You need to stop the bad habit, but it is what it is. And I feel proud about it. And so I'm going with Seinfeld. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, she would, I don't think she would have had the career that she had, had it not been for Seinfeld. Right. I think that she, she uses that to kind of platform into a lot of other things. Last one here. I wanted to mention troubled marriage movies. This is, a troubled marriage movie. We yeah. we could have went with some, you know, New York relationship movies. Uh, I, th- I think there were a couple different categories we could have gone here. I have a short list. Before Midnight, uh, Blue Valentine, starring Oof. my guy, Rai Gaz. Yeah. Jeez Louise. Marriage Story, your guy. We got Adam Driver here. Hope Springs, Unfaithful, When a Man Loves a Woman, Indecent Proposal, The Story of Us, and Take This Waltz. That is what my short list consists of. I'm not I'm not going to beat around the bush here. It's before midnight and I love marriage story. I love blue Valentine. I will never not pick before midnight, put it on a list of anything. That's what I'm picking before midnight is the single most underrated before trilogy movie. And it might be the best. I think you make an argument for it. I think it is. I think it is a masterful piece of work. I mean, you can make the argument. It's okay to be wrong. Um, <laughs> okay. Before Whoa. sunset exists, but um, Whoa. <laughs> I do think we agree. We have the t- same top three here before midnight, blue Valentine and my pick marriage story. Oh yeah. Uh, I, I love that movie talking about lines that I quote them coming up the escalators. Like I cried four times. <laughs> me too. Like that's happened so many times, especially with all these a 24 movies. We started, you send like, me watching, that meme like, like once a week, every time we watch a movie all the like- time, it's the same like with close, you know, like I feel yeah. like it's going to be the same thing with past lives. Like it's just like, Whoa. Oh yeah, it's going to happen. So yeah, I'm going to go with marriage story. Yeah. Jeez. I mean, blue Valentine, if you haven't seen blue Valentine, I would just Oof. set aside like some serious emotional space for that movie. Yeah, but yeah. Also incredible, incredible. Like I, I think about the moment that Ryan Gosling sings on the ukulele to Michelle yep. Williams and just absolutely kills me. I can't like, I, I can barely make it through the pot. I gotta, I gotta move on. We gotta push through because it's <laughs> so tough. A 24 ranking for you hurt my feelings. We got a through F 24. Throwing some spice in there. What are you? What are you feeling, Ben? I don't know. It's uh, it was like it was just this wonderful, you know, encapsulated just like this one complete movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I would rewatch it again. It didn't necessarily like knock my socks off or anything, but like I, I see what you did I, there. I'm really proud of you for that. I that appreciate was good. that. <laughs> um, but I don't necessarily have like feedback on what would make it better. So right, I'm I'm probably just gonna go with an a minus 24 like it's really good I, I have nothing to add to it but it just yeah i don't know that's probably what i'd go with it it's between that and a b plus but i'm gonna go a minus because it, it was really good we're one in the same we're just trying not to hurt each other's feelings tonight because yeah, we picked yeah. the same true cinema we're gonna pick the same 824 score man i'm going with a minus 24 i i am much like you and i think part of that thinking is it is a perfectly low stakes movie yeah. so i don't know if there's anything more that you could have done but it it is not designed to be the best movie of the year it's not designed to be you know something absolutely you know phenomenal i think it is designed to be exactly what we think it is and what we received it as um a really superb funny heart heart touching you know piece of work uh nicole hollow center wonderful writer one wonderful screenwriter yeah um, and you know, I hope as, as soon as the writer strike is over, I hope she can get some more stuff going. Cause I really, I really want to see more stuff of hers. She's been making movies forever for like 30 years. And it just feels like everyone's kind of a gem, which is mm-hmm. really incredible. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. I even told Molly, like I might go, I might go watch this movie again. Like I liked it. I liked it that much where it's just like, ah, I kind of want to go back. It's a, not a horrible way to spend 93 minutes. Like it's, no. I, I really liked it a lot. I do have a question for you though. Oh boy. Do you throw away your underwear? Well, see, this is tough. I that's a great question. And, and <laughs> I I I do I do. I do I will say I do. But I, there's no like time. You know, I'm not t- I'm not keeping yeah. a calendar. It's like whenever one of the sides like starts to rip. Whenever we start to get out of hand, it's in the trash can you go. Once there's more holes than it came with, then it's like, okay, like, <laughs> this has know. to leave. Like, if it's not for one of my legs to come in, like, these holes shouldn't be here. So, out of yeah. here. Yeah. yeah what, where, where, are you on, where are you on socks? Are you like, are you a warmth guy? Are you a wicking guy? Do you have a preference? 
I'm honestly, I'm big on stance. That's my stance. Um, okay. <laughs> I love their socks. Like I have a, a lot of them. Um, those are probably my favorite. Uh, so I don't know. They're, they're a little different. Sometimes they're thin, like they have all the different kinds, but mm. being in Utah, I definitely have my, you know, my super thick socks as well, uh, for the winter time. But for the most part, I'm, I'm enjoying the summer right now where it's either I can wear like, you know, ankle socks and not show anything. Or if okay. I want to bust out like my outcast Stangonia socks and just show them <laughs> you off, got like, them ready. I can do that. I'm ready to go. So yeah, I'm, right. I'm a big fan of the stance. So you're an ankle guy. You're an ankle sock guy then. Fascinating. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I wouldn't know. Right. Because I only see from your shoulders up. So yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what you keep your sock preference a, a secret. Well, I don't know. You got to pay extra for that if you want to see it. So yeah, you got to go to the Patreon. <laughs> yeah, wink, wink. I, hint, I do hint. all those with my legs in the air, so you can see what socks <laughs> I'm wearing. So yeah, yeah, we get the full body cam. <laughs> <laughs> um, next week on the pod, it's a big one, Ben. You alluded to it. It's the real deal. It's my most anticipated A24 movie of the year. I am about ready to just combust because every freaking day I have to go on twitter.com and read how much people love past lives and know that i haven't seen it and we're finally going to get to it i'm i'm excited it's the one i didn't know i'd be super excited about but the trailer is just like the the trailer floored me so like this movie is just going to be intense uh it's definitely up there for me pulling up their list i know we've got priscilla coming from sofia coppola um and wizards from my dude david michaud who i love his stuff as well so there's some stuff to look forward to, but this is the immediate, like, I think this is going to be the front runner for quite a while. Um, especially for me after the bummer that Bo was. So I can't mm-hmm. wait to talk about past lives. Um, and yeah, I'm glad that we watched this movie. This was a, a wonderful movie to see. If you haven't seen it for some reason, you listen to all this. I hope we've convinced <laughs> you to go check it out because like, it's great. It's, yeah. it's, it's like really good. Um, and if you have seen it, we want to know what you think about it. Uh, we mm-hmm. are on the socials. We are at Twitter and Instagram at 24 minutes of a 24. You can also see us in the flesh, not my socks, but you can see us. Uh, it's got to be YouTube. 24 minutes of a 24 dash. No socks. That's no socks at all. <laughs> um, but yeah, we are on YouTube. Uh, so check us out there. Subscribe. Everything goes there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, this is a good movie. I'm glad we talked about it. It's a great movie. Lawhorn. And I am Ethan Simi. Spring break forever, bitches. 